uh, session called The Use of Lexicographic Resources in Croatian Primary and Secondary Education. Thank you. So, hello again. My name is Anna Ostroški-Anić and I will uh, present my four-person team to tell you about a survey we conducted basically to see uh, is there anybody using our dictionaries uh, and or how we can fix it. Uh, so, first I'll tell you what the motivation was and how we structured the survey and implemented it and then I'll briefly describe our participants because we were very happy to have many of them and we'll discuss some results and maybe discuss options for, for future work. So why is it that we decided to have this survey? It was actually because we were thinking about some future plans and future projects. Two of us, uh, myself and another colleague, we work basically on terminology related projects and developing specialized resources, databases mostly. And two other colleagues were working, are working on a Croatian online dictionary of, for general purpose. So all of us have some lexicographic experience. And when we were thinking about the users and how we could do some research regarding uh, dictionary usage, then we thought that if it's in the context of education, it's mostly with students as focus groups. And there are plenty studies where dictionaries have been uh, tested and used as reference tools and teaching aid, uh, aids primarily in foreign language learning, but also some studies uh, show uh, how they contribute to enhance literacy and reading skills especially, of course, when L1 uh, dictionaries are used. So it's been known that children's dictionaries do contribute um, to not only enhancing vocabulary development, but also facilitating uh, acquiring encyclopedic and cultural knowledge. And it's also been shown that explicit instruction of dictionary skills leads to improving reference skills. That is some, this is something that's been uh, one of my topics, so to say, that they're interested for me to see how definitions can be better modeled in order to develop categorization with children and uh, um, whether those could be applied to textbooks uh, development, for example. So when we looked at the national curriculum for creation as L1, it's actually mentioned in every single grade in primary and secondary education the children do have to have some knowledge of using dictionaries and they are explicitly um, described as learning outcomes even from the first grade. So in the first grade, children are expected to be able to find what a certain word means in children's dictionaries. And by the time they reach, by the time they're 15 years old, they should be able to analyze the lexical semantic relations between words. So we see that they do have some um, great expectations from them. Uh, our aim was following this, was basically to see how dictionaries are used by teachers, so not, not by students, but by teachers in primary and secondary education, both when they prepare for class, which was very interesting, and also in classrooms themselves. So we had questions like, do they use dictionaries or is it just something in the curricula and then it's not actually done? What types of dictionaries, for what purposes? and what was especially relevant for us is to see, are there some teachers that are not language teachers and that they do use dictionaries as reference uh, uh, tools or you know, for, for, for their own su uh, school subjects? So we started with three research questions. The first one was to what extent they do use lexicographic resources. And this term lexicographic resources was well defined in the survey itself. It included dictionaries, databases, lexicons, encyclopedias. So we listed what we mean by lexicographic resources. And uh, we looked at how they use them to prepare teaching uh, materials and how they use them in classrooms uh, during uh, the teaching activities. Then we wanted to see are teachers satisfied with the existing resources? So are they satisfied with the content and how it is presented? and is it relevant according to the curriculum they have to teach. Uh, we had three open-ended questions for this, so we had both quantitative and qualitative analysis, of course, because we needed to go through all those um, replies and code them. And then uh, we wanted to see, are they familiar with specialized uh, dictionaries, databases, and other lexicographic resources. It was conducted as an anonymous online uh, survey in Google Forms. We had four sections with 24 questions. First, of course, we needed to gather personal information, demographic uh, information about participants. 
about their workplace, and then the two central parts of the survey were, were uh, related to the use of dictionaries when preparing classes and the use of dictionaries in class. We had different question formats, and what was very explicitly uh, repeated throughout several, um, uh, not only questions, but when we dis disseminated, we also wanted to have all teachers of all subjects, not only language teachers, First, we had conducted a pilot survey on uh, 20 participants and then amended and corrected some questions. And where I think we were very successful in distributing uh, the survey, we used, of course, emails, personal contacts, because that works best, but also uh, Facebook teacher groups where the majority of all of them replied within one Sunday afternoon. So <laughs> that was, uh, I guess, time for teachers when they do prepare for work on starting on Monday. And then we also, because we wanted to really reach not only you know, major cities, but all different uh, parts of Croatia, we randomly selected a certain number of principals uh, because principals' contacts are publicly available on the, on the webpage of the Ministry of Education. And then we sent, sent out letters asking them if they could distribute the survey. So all in all, we had 500 participants. Oh, I forgot to say, the survey was in a very short time frame, actually in two weeks, uh, but it was enough because, you know, when, when you sent out uh, a call for something, it's usually done within five days, three to five days. So there was no point in keeping it any longer because we would not have gathered more uh, participants. As expected, most of them were female. And then we explicitly targeted and asked, could you ask a male colleague to fill this in so that you could get more uh, male participants? Uh, you can see that we had a very good age uh, distribution. The majority was in the age uh, limit from 35 to 55, which uh, encompasses most experienced teachers. Also, they are very well regionally distributed. We expected the majority to be from Zagreb, which has around a million uh, almost almost a quarter of all population in Croatia lives in Zagreb, but actually only 25% of all participants were from Zagreb. So we really have people from all over uh, the country, which was important you know, to know how they um, feel and how they, um, what teaching experience and practice they have. So uh, also there was a, almost an ideal distribution of 47% working in primary schools and 50% working in secondary schools. And we had a question about their work satisfaction, which was a bit, some, some, some people thought that it was not needed, but we wanted to see if people are generally satisfied with their uh, job, because if they weren't, then, then they might not, you know, had done certain things in class, they might not prepare, or they wouldn't care about using dictionaries as an extra activity. So most people are either fully satisfied or mostly satisfied, which is another, <laughs> Um, surprise, you know, coming from teachers. Um, so the school subjects that our participants teach are as, of course, as expected, the majority of them teaches creation as L1, and then um, English, French, and German as foreign languages. But we had a large, well, a big uh, ratio, of, oh, sorry, not ratio, a big number of um, participants that teach primary school um, grades from, from, from grade one to grade four. And that's also relevant because they teach not only creation, but also math, science, art, uh, music. And we had a, a good number of vocational subject teachers, uh, like engineering, uh, accounting, economy, so, and a couple of them from medical schools. So that was also a good result. So when they reported about using dictionaries in preparing for class. Uh, we, as expected, the, the majority uses creation monolingual uh, or foreign language dictionaries uh, as, as predicted. But 57% uh, of them use them once a month or more frequently. We had five, uh, once a month, once in two to three months, once a year, and almost never those were um, uh, possible options. Then 25% 25, 25 use English and under foreign language dictionaries, and around 60% use creation specialized resources once in three months, which was, well, rather good. Uh, when they, uh, so you, here you can see how dictionaries are used during class activities from grade one to grade four in secondary school. You see that they are, according to the curriculum, more and more used. Of course, sometimes you need to, you need to think there's always this um, 
uh, question how honest people are in surveys. So maybe someone would say that they are using more than they would. But overall, uh, it looks as expected with a slight decrease in the fourth grade and eighth grade. So in these final, in final grades, they are not used uh, that much. Uh, for what activities they use them most often, for vocabulary ga uh, gaining, vocabulary development, uh, research when they give them homeworks, uh, the, this of course uh, is, uh, concerns the secondary uh, classes, uh, then also for uh, essay writing and checking for unknown words. Uh, here we um, manually coded, so in order to have as objective um, presentation of their answers as possible, two of us coded each answer by the most prominent um, concept mentioned in, in the answer. And that's how we got that the majority uses dictionaries for looking up unknown words, for def definitions and checking meanings, uh, looking up concepts. Here we didn't discriminate, we, we did discriminate between definitions of concepts and definitions of words. I know that the majority of people would not know the difference between a concept and a word, but here in most cases people did mention definitions of concepts when they, for example, wanted uh, children to, to, to check the definitions of, I don't know, syntactic categories. So not checking for an unknown word, but what this concept means. So there was a difference between this. Of course, for spelling, assistance with essay writing, uh, searching for uh, loan words, acronyms, and, and things like that. So when we think about meeting, um, then we had a question, of course, what they would change or what they were unhappy with in these uh, resources. And we here will also try to uh, code their critic criticisms. So the majority um, shows the need for a single place where they could find information. Instead of using several targeted dictionaries, they would like to have a single place like a database, or also that certain dictionaries uh, could have more etymological in, uh, information, or um, that they don't have a dictionary of synonyms, of idioms. It's important to know that many of these resources really do, do not exist in Croatian. Croatian still does not have a thesaurus, for example. But several of them are they are in the printed form. It's just that people barely use uh, printed dictionaries anymore. So dictionary of synonyms exists, you know, has, has been for, for a long time, but it's not online. It's not available uh, in, in digital form. Uh, and again, uh, um, so some of them they consider to be outdated or incomplete in the sense that they could use more collocations uh, or examples. And sometimes they find them too complex or extensive for school use. This is a very relevant piece of information, especially for primary school students and possibly for uh, non-expert users. So here you can see that these are suggested improvements and additions, uh, if you can read it. Uh, some would need to have accentuated forms or pronunciation available, uh, things that are typically uh, lacking in, 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 um, in certain dictionaries. So to come to some conclusions, um, we had, uh, as I mentioned, the qualitative analysis of open-ended questions. And here, overall, our respondents were generally satisfied with available resources, but they would like to have them merged uh, in one place, of the, or as many mentioned, combined resources. Uh, the major shortcomings they mentioned include the lack of resources suitable for students at lower levels of education. Basically, there is one uh, in for creation, there is one dictionary for children that's uh, from age six, seven to 10. And then there is one school dictionary that is maybe up to age 15. And then there's the general um, population, general language uh, dictionary. So the, this outdatedness or incompleteness of the existing resources, technical restrictions, and what seems to be the common concern is that, that there's a lack of terms uh, in available resources, especially uh, related to newer concepts, technological innovations, uh, also some very specialized uh, resources concerning dialects, uh, colloquial language use, etc. So how, how much of this information can we use for our future work? Uh, what, what I was particularly happy about is that I saw several math teachers. Uh, the, we had a, uh, 
when we were developing a, a, a terminology database for creation, then we had a project of mathematical terminology. We also had a large project of music terminology. But then we saw that mathematicians are people who are very, uh, who care about their terminology. That was uh, a nice thing to know. And it seems that they are still, maybe because they're struggling, math is always difficult. And several of them did mention that they use reference tools, dictionaries, and they do point children to some um, web pages or to, to encyclopedias where they can study specialized uh, mathematical concepts. So uh, we would like to raise awareness and, and, and um, invite people to use terminological resources in teaching, uh, especially for preparing uh, materials and especially for primary education students because uh, it is often um, in today's textbooks that they have very complex, not very, they have complex concepts, but it, it's been shown that children today cannot really understand uh, abstract concepts, you know, from certain age. Uh, they have difficulties in formulating their own definitions, and when they learn, they have to learn how to define, how to, how to learn, then here, you know, having some resources at their disposal would be helpful. So we would like to do some work with and develop resources that would enhance children's categorizational skills while improving their definitional skills. And then having those uh, existing definitions of abstract concepts or very specialized concepts could be modified in textbooks uh, to, to, to be better acquired by children. So this would be, uh, I forgot to mention here, but we, uh, in our paper, we, we did have a whole list of questions as appendix translated into English, and we have the whole survey results available on Zotero in case someone you know, wants to conduct a similar study or at least see, uh, is there someone out there using dictionaries in class anymore? So that would be all for me. And this is to, to finish uh, my presentation with uh, one day when I was sorting out my own old dictionaries, then I realized how much I missed uh, the, <laughs> the old versions and that uh, we are lucky if children will be using any kind of lexicographic resources online. But uh, during our survey, actually, there were a lot of people saying that they do bring printed dictionaries in class when they explicitly teach lexicography and want to say this is what an etymological dictionary looks like. But OK, so they still live somewhere out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. This was very interesting. Uh, and I think we can all relate to the questions. Are there people reading our dictionaries? <laughs> so do you have any questions? Yeah, thanks for the interesting talk. I just want to ask, you uh, said in the end that your data set is available somewhere. So is it somewhere online or is it the easiest way to contact you? Because I'm like, really interested in this subset for the mathematics and other STEM related subject teachers. Uh, it's available. I mean, the results, the, the, the replies of all participants are available on Zotero. There's a link uh, in, in the paper. And the questions we used in the survey, we, we translated them into English and they're also in the paper. But we didn't have a specific subset for mathematicians. We just had a specific question for specialized re resources. So here we could uh, see people, it was an open-ended question and people could write, what are the resources in creation spe specialized that you use and what are they in, in English? But when we looked at what, what is it, the subject that they teach, then here we saw, uh, several math teachers uh, using dictionaries as references. Did you have any explicit questions about the, well, the attitudes towards the dictionaries in terms of prescriptive versus descriptive? We had it this morning in, in, the, in the keynote session. Do they regard this as sort of authoritative things where they look up uh, things when they're uncertain, or is it more what you seem to describe uh, an, an aid in finding information rather than this prescriptive uh, attitudes? We didn't have an explicit question about that, but uh, in answers, well, well, I forgot to say, we had an explicit question of how they, uh, what activities they used, and 
how students were satisfied with those activities. And the majority overall said that the students were very happy to, because mostly this is group work or looking into, you know, investigating things, but I mean, generally that's okay. But um, uh, teachers of creation as L1, they look at dictionaries as uh, authorities and for prescriptive. Uh, they use them very often for spelling, checking spelling and uh, teaching orthography rules. And here, even there's, there is an online dictionary of creation that was not, uh, it's an old dictionary, not something that the Institute for Creation Language does, but people don't know that. So they had comments like, uh, or you need to do, you need to update that dictionary, it, you know, to include this and that. So if it's, yes, it, it is regarded generally in Croatia, it is regarded if it's in the dictionary, then it's something that uh, it's, a, it's a kind of authority. So for creation, yes. For foreign language, there's a, well, um, it's interesting for foreign language teaching that the whole attitude and the methodology has changed. So it's dictionaries are not that explicitly used as they used to be. It's more expected that children acquire uh, a language. So uh, I'd say they do use them for translating skills, and, but not as often as they used to, because it's just not the way it's done. But when creation is taught, then yes, prescriptive. <laughs> Well, uh, did you also ask the, what kind of alternatives they use? If they don't use dictionaries, what do they use, right? So teacher's perspective and student's perspective, because, for example, in context of Estonia, they, used, uh, they use mostly, for now, for example, like machine translation tools. They outperform dictionaries very fast and, and uh, contexts and so on, and, uh, and also such kind of tools like Lingua, Reversor, uh, and so on. So, did you uh, have ha did you have this such kind of question also in knowledge to get the broader view of what kind of resources are used or could be used in in school context? We didn't have the questions of what what are your alternatives, uh, but uh, in some comments um, you can see that st uh, students are children, students in general, are not that well familiar, they're not familiar with machine translation tools, apart from Google Translate, I mean. Um, and they would generally say they use Wikipedia as a reference, but that is also one of our examples of specialized resource. It is, um, uh, interestingly enough, many of them mention creation encyclopedia as a specialized resource, I think 20% of, of participants. And uh, children, if they, don't know, and I think many of them, this is something, this is just anecdotal experience, but they are not familiar with using different types of dictionaries and they just, you know, put a word into Google, that's how they do it. I'll Google it and I'll get results, and they do get some definitions, so that's the alternative, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'm wondering if you see a future where lexicographers and curriculum developers can collaborate together you know, for the people who are building the, you know, I'm sure there aren't many, but there should be some Croatian language resources. And I wonder if, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, the curriculum should be um, updated. I think not in terms of the content or, or that too, but in terms of some methodology, because um, these definitions that I mentioned, um, it, it, it's been a practice in Croatia to have new textbooks every couple of years. And then they are very often, I think, checked for specialized content, but not by people who are familiar with children's language. And then you would really have abstract concepts that I know, for example, I know this from some research, but uh, that children cannot understand what subject predicate means until they're 12 or something like that. So they, they learn these things by heart. And when you give them examples, they will underline what, what's, a, uh, they will not underline what a verb is, but they will know what action is, what state is. So here, I think that more collaboration should be uh, made. And there's, of course, room, not only, you know, there are many good textbooks because people know this, but definitional patterns in general are still, you know, something that you need to learn by heart and you don't really understand what that means. We have a comment from someone in the chat. Uh, yeah, it's not a question, just a short comment. Uh, Christian says bilingual dictionaries should introduce also the phonemic forms of the word. 
if you can just comment on that. Yes, that was, uh, that was another comment by many teachers of creation that they would like to have um, uh, pronunciation of words because there are three dialects in Croatia. So to say, and children who are from the southern regions do not know to, how to pronounce properly uh, some standard words. So yeah, that's also one of these prescriptive uses of dictionaries. more of an advertisement but we have this workshop at the end right about uh, <laughs> but i was wondering here so this is difficulty levels basically for the, the workshop is about difficulty levels the sefer levels for linking it to lexicographic data but i was wondering do you see that in the survey here that teachers look for information about how difficult words are at which level they should be taught or in, in which year of secondary school I don't know, that could be in a frequency dictionary, for example. Is that used by, by teachers in the development of their educational materials? Uh, I think that is used when they're developing topics for essay writing in, in uh, higher grades of secondary schools, but not, um, uh, it was not something that we came across in this group, but for when creation is taught as a foreign language, then yes, then yes, they do have uh, lists of, of words that are going to frequency. We do have a frequency dictionary of creation, luckily enough, <laughs> but uh, it, it has not, it's not used widely in, in, in the school system. Uh, it could be a follow-up question to previous one, more or less. Uh, um, do you have uh, in curriculum of uh, Croatia uh, this idea that that uh, complexity of words kind of increase from the first uh, grade to to last grade, meaning uh, it's very very uh, very well known that in America, uh, when you finish a school, you need to know some uh, uh, lexicon, yeah, some some uh, also pretty advanced words and know how to spell them and how to use them. Is something similar in Croatia or not? They in do have the learning outcomes. So every subject has the, these learning outcomes. And uh, as part of this, I think it is also vocabulary is mentioned, but not like not like that in the States. So specialized terms for, let's say, linguistic terms are introduced, I think, with uh, when they're nine or 10, but definitely earlier than before. It's at least, you know, what we don't remember that we had learned types of adjectives when we were in grade yeah, four or five. Like, uh, loan words. Uh, uh, no, like no, lo no. Loan no. words which we uh, uh, see in literature. Yeah, when you finish school, you need uh, have need have the ability to uh, read quite complex texts. Yeah. Yes. And yes. And, and you need vocabulary. It is as part of the curriculum for each grade, but not as something that you need to know when you finish your education, not like in the States. No. Any more questions, comments, advertisements? <laughs> so if not, then we thank you very much again for this talk. And I think the coffee break is waiting. <laughs>